Hello, hello! Blart here with a Sailing Divine Odin Shinryu, my first Shinryu video, golly. We're bringing a team of Sephiroth, Gabronth, and Galuf. Before we get too deep into it, be sure to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, ring that notification bell, and leave a comment down below. It's been a while since I've done that patter, man, uh, feels good to be back. I'm pretty excited for this. Whew, I did pick a doozy of a fight to come back to, though. This is a mechanically intensive and rather challenging contest. Um, We've opened, as you saw, with Galif on his using his free skill for the AA to get a free uh, few turns of Brave Cap up, which is pretty neat. Uh, he still does have enough time to charge his EX if you do that, although it does mean he's one turn late on getting his counter up and running. I used Gibran's Guilt earlier to push Odin back for one turn in order for Galif to get that second Shahiradori in order to get his, uh, his second counterattack going. I think, uh, this is probably one of the stronger teams you could bring to this fight, I think. Um, Galif is probably the best tank for it because he's countering all of Odin's melee attacks, and is a single target focus with his counters. Uh, the batteries and stuff are very helpful for countering Odin when he breaks someone and, or break, well, he's gonna break Galf most likely, Galf, and, uh, you know, getting his, that aura going. The aura triggers whenever he breaks someone. It also triggers a threshold, such as this one. It goes yellow, and when it's yellow, you, he takes reduced damage. When it's red, he kills you immediately, no questions asked, and that sucks. Uh, luckily, as you can see here, Galf is able to keep him in check using his counterattacks to break him in response to atta him attacking us. We're going to go ahead with the Bronth and use his rebreak to get him out of that, because you reduce that aura by breaking him. Gonna, of course, the Bronth is a fantastic unit for this fight with his rebreaks and with his defensive mitigation, because there can be uh, some heavy damage coming out of that uh, that force attack. Sephiroth, of course, synergizes tremendously with Gabronth FR, uh, as you'll be seeing. So, uh, really enjoying that uh, how in Shinryu they have these uh, these threshold indicators on the HP bar, so you kind of know like okay, it was it was it 59 or 69 percent when they do that thing, you know, uh, and it shows you right there, so that's really helpful. You can see from how many <laughs> indicators they have here. Odin does a lot of stuff, and that's ignoring the FR gauge that we have charging up there. We're actually gonna go ahead and get ready for that right now. Sephiroth BT, the perfect partner for Gabronth FR, which you will <laughs> are darn sure we're gonna be using. We're actually maybe to your surprise going to be using Gabron's FR now. Hell yeah, this is the best G FR animation in the game. Fight me on that. A little nod. Uh, it's uh, so good. So good. Love it. There we go. Now, of course, we uh, are attacking a debuff target and breaking every turn, so that's going to be jacking up that gauge. Otherwise, it's a little tricky to pull off a um, really super high bonus because of that break requirement. But anyway, uh, the reason you see that we're actually using the FR now, you'll see that You'd probably be thinking, okay, use the FR to counter the enemy force time, to turn it off, which it does do. I found in practice, though, with this team, it, it's kind of a problem, because what ends up happening is, like, the dispel that it does means you have to do a bit of a reset or suffer for it, because you either... There we go, Gabronth BT, hell yeah. Um, you're going to, like, lose one of Gallop's evasion buffs, or, like, Gabronth loses cover, or... Uh, the, the biggest thing is Sephiroth is guaranteed to lose his five Genova stacks, which means he becomes slow as molasses. Have fun going into force time with the Sephiroth who's going to maybe, if you're lucky, act once. Um, so I decided it's actually probably a lot more efficient to do it here, with Sephiroth still at max stacks not having to reset them. Because um, the main things about the FR, the enemy F, uh, enemy force time, I should say, I need to get my terminology started. Oh, look at that damage. Damn it, Sephiroth. The main thing about it is uh, is that it puts that debuff on you where if you get attacked while you have the debuff, you auto-die. I mean, the attack itself can also, uh, the force attack can just straight up kill you if it breaks you, so you have to be careful about that. But, um, I figured there are ways around that that don't require you to just turn their force time off with a force attack. So I figured, hey, let's just get Mondo damage here with a super souped up Sephiroth. I mean, uh, there we go. We actually skipped two of his warp phases before his FR, his force attack went off, so that's great. You see, he, he warps at 80, 50, and uh, 20, I think, I think. Take the extra turns. You know you know the mechanic that they started introducing in late Lithuania Plus. Um, luckily, Galif helps control that with his counterattacks. Another reason why a tank is really good here. Now, here we go. I used Innocence there because I knew it would break him to get rid of that aura and battery the party, which was important to make sure we didn't get broken by the attack and die. So now we have three turns of him uh, potentially being a threat. However... With Mog and Unicalls in back pocket, we don't have to worry about him actually killing us. He is going to be spamming uh, Doppelhow, I think it's called, which is a guaranteed break even if you dodge the attack, so Galif is going to get broken basically every turn here. But it's not a huge loss just because he immediately counters and you know, breaks Odin back. 
And so it just kind of works out just right. Oh, he also does that delay aura thing where, like, you know, it's kind of like a mini num debuff. You get delayed a turn every time you act, which is... Eh, it's an irritation, but... Nothing we can't work around. Because the thing is, most of his attacks are actually... It's a very fascinating enemy because most of it, his attacks are brave attacks. He actually has very little in the way of HP damage that he deals out. Except for his force attack. However, well, he, okay, he has that vertical slice attack. I think that actually yeah, could do it. Um, you know, it just occurred to me that I was using Gallop the whole time, so even if he is doing HP damage, I probably would have noticed, so never mind. Uh, I have no idea. It just... It's an interesting fight, I should say. The reason I'm talking about it is it's an interesting fight because it's one of those fights where brave damage matters. Like, getting broken matters. And those are, I think, the more interesting fights because... Um, it kind of makes the brave system matter again, which, which is helpful, and it means it's, there's more to the you know more to things than just HP damage. Like something like a character having 30% brave damage reduction for the party actually matters, which is kind of neat. I, I like that because uh, I always appreciate when the game respects that it has both of those kind of modalities, HP and brave. Now we're going to a several first phase here, with one turn left on the Gabromp first effect, just to get as much damage as possible out of that effect. Um, I don't know if I timed the Gabronth burst right. I, I wanted to get the burst finisher during the force time and to get the effect going to just, like, jack up our HP damage, but I actually know if it matters. I figured because the HP cap up would uh, scale really well with force time. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, um... So we're going to hang it. We're not really using this burst phase for damage. It's nice that it's doing good damage because it's Sephiroth. Um, but in practice, as you probably can guess, we're using it for the force time, force gauge, force effect. Well, the break thing that's going to do with the Bronx. Because uh, the scariest part of this fight are, is probably the 20 slash... Or the, the 19 slash 9% phase. Because he gets the turn warps, which is scary. And then at 9%, he he goes straight into Red Aura, I believe. And that is spooky stuff, because uh, he, he just can mess you up really quickly out of nowhere if you're not prepared for it. And so I don't have to deal with that. So instead, what I'm going to do is once we can get down to six turns on the... FR gauge, we're going to hop in a summon and try to blow him away at that point. In the meantime, we're just going to try to build up as much of a bonus as possible outside of it. And then, um, that's, that's the strategy here. That's how we're going to close this out. Um, yeah, you'll, uh, <laughs> it's kind of funny with this team. It's a team of all blues and all Ultima weapons, because I have two Greatsword Ultimas, and a lot of people are like, Blart, you're, why would you get two Greatswords? That's like a hundred extra cores you're using on a duplicate that you might not even use if you only use one Greatsword unit, and I think for most weapons, it's a stupid idea to get two of the same copy of a greatsword. There's so many good units out there, and they fulfill different roles. Like, you look, and you're like, okay, well, I want to use a tank, Galif, Orn, greatsword. I want to use a DPS character. We got, the, we got you know, Sephiroth. I mean, Zack does both. <laughs> um, I want to run kind of a more supportive character. Pain is a greatsword character. Beatrix is a greatsword character. Um, heck, Guy is a greatsword character if you want to be a hipster. Um... And so that's why I went for the double greatsword and why it's paying off in spades here with the double, well, triple ultimate weapon since Gabronth has that uh, short sword. And there we have it. Woo! First video back. Feels good. That was a uh, struggle, though. Partially explain why the video is so late. That and, well, you know, fatherhood. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And I will see you in the next video. Oh, sweet. I got 10 tickets from that. No friend unit. Sweet. Anyway, <laughs> adios.